Myra, a highly regarded creative director in the digital media industry, was three months into a new job and was having a particularly good day. That's before her CEO called her into his cabin. Hey Myra. Nothing really. I've noticed you around at work and I just wanted to share an observation about you. Yes, just three months in and the CEO already noticed me. Well done, Myra. I need you to be more creative. Ridiculous. You've got to be kidding me. I am the creative director of this company. Creative is in my job title and I'm very, very good at it. This is contrary to every piece of feedback I've received my entire career. The CEO quickly said something friendly, but Myra didn't really register it. I think I'm fairly good at being creative, but sure, I'll look into it. Thanks so much. You wouldn't know creative if it popped up and slapped you in the face. Don't you dare lecture me on creative. Myra walked out the door, searching her phone for her headhunter friend's number. Can you relate to Myra's situation? Of course you can. For no matter what we do or how well we do it, there's no escaping the fact that some criticism is virtually guaranteed to come our way. And those moments are often some of the toughest we will face in work and life. And for the record, Myra's reaction was perfectly normal. The problem with receiving feedback. No one thinks they have a problem with receiving feedback and almost everyone will insist they desire it. What everyone truly wants though is to be adored and have everyone think that they are awesome and to be told that. And criticism by definition is an indication that there are some flaws in our perceived picture-perfect self-image. And that can make receiving feedback particularly painful at times. As it turns out, there's a psychological basis for this discomfort. What happens in our brains when we receive criticism? Let's face it, it's not reflexive for us to feel like we are wrong and it's even harder for us to hear that from others. That's because 1. Our brains view criticism as a threat to our survival. Because our brains are protective of us, neuroscientists say our brain will go out of its way to make sure we always feel like we are in the right even when we are not. And when we receive criticism, our brain tries to protect us from the threat it perceives to our place in the social order of things. Threats to our standing in the eyes of others are remarkably potent biologically, almost as those to our very survival, says psychologist Daniel Goldman. In other words, what people think of us matters deeply to us, leaving us feeling very vulnerable if our good reputation is threatened. No wonder feedback is tough for us, not just to hear, but also to offer. The second reason why it's difficult for us to receive feedback. We remember criticism strongly, but inaccurately. Sometimes, Feedback doesn't feel true to us because we are simply unaware of our weaknesses and negatives. These sit squarely in our blind spot. And that plays out in a very interesting way. 
Charles Jacobs, author of Management Rewired, Why Feedback Doesn't Work, says that when we hear information that conflicts with our self-image, our instinct is to first change the information rather than ourselves. But although criticism is more likely to be remembered incorrectly, we don't often forget it. Clifford Nass, a professor of communication at Stanford University says, almost everyone remembers negative things more strongly and in more detail. It's called a negativity bias. Our brains have evolved separate, more sensitive brain circuits to handle negative emotions and events and it processes the bad stuff more thoroughly than the positive stuff. That means receiving criticism will always have a greater impact than receiving praise. How to receive feedback like a complete pro? Receiving feedback well doesn't mean that you have to accept all that's told to you. Being good at receiving feedback means just that, that you receive it. Unfortunately, in the heat of the moment, many of us react with defensiveness or even worse, attack the person giving feedback. And once they are rebuffed, argued with or subjected to your defensive behavior, co-workers and bosses are less likely to approach you again with helpful feedback. That is a gigantic setback for one's own growth and development. So, how do you tame the typical defensive reactions that erupt in the face of criticism? The next time you receive constructive criticism from your manager or a peer, use these steps to handle the encounter with tact and grace. A. Stop your first reaction. At the first sign of criticism, before you do anything, stop. Try not to react at all. Take at least a couple of seconds before you respond to the situation. Now, while a few seconds seems insignificant in real life, it's ample time for your brain to process the situation. And in that moment, you can halt a dismissive facial expression or a reactive quip and remind yourself to stay calm. B. Listen for understanding. As the person shares feedback with you, listen closely without interruption. When they are done, repeat back what you have heard. For example, say something like, I hear you saying that you want me to provide more detailed weekly reports. Is that right? At this point, avoid analyzing or questioning the person's assessment. Instead, focus on understanding his or her comments and perspective. Recognize that it is as difficult to give feedback as it is to receive it and that the person giving you feedback may be nervous or may not express their ideas perfectly. See? Say thank you. Look the person in the eye and thank them for sharing feedback with you deliberately and as sincerely as you can. Say something like, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about this with me. Now, expressing appreciation doesn't mean you're agreeing with the assessment, but it does show that you're acknowledging the effort your colleague took to evaluate you and share his or her thoughts with you. D. Ask questions to deconstruct the feedback. Now it's time to process the feedback. You'll probably want to get more clarity at this point and share your perspective as well on the situation. Even the most seasoned executives can appear a bit heartless when providing feedback. If there is a point made that doesn't sit right with you, avoid engaging in a debate. Instead, ask questions to get to the root of the actual issues being raised 
and possible solutions for addressing them. For example, if a colleague tells you that you lost your temper in a meeting, here are a few ways to deconstruct that feedback. A. Seek specific examples to help you understand the issue. So you may say something like, I was a little frustrated, but can you share where in the meeting you thought I lost my temper? B. Acknowledge the feedback that is not in dispute. Say something like, you're right that I did cut him off while he was talking and I later apologized for that. C. Try to understand whether this is an isolated issue, for example, a mistake you made just once. Ask a question like, have you noticed me losing my temper in other meetings? D. Look for concrete solutions to address the feedback. You could say something like, I'd love to hear your ideas on how I might handle this differently in the future. 5. Request time to follow up. Hopefully, by this point in the conversation, you can agree on the issues that were raised. Once you articulate what you will do going forward and thank the person again for the feedback, you can close the conversation and move on. Know that as a receiver of the feedback, you are very much on the controlling end of how the follow-up goes. You take into consideration and make changes you see fit later. If, however, the issue is a serious or urgent one, you may want to ask for a follow-up meeting to ask more questions and get agreement on next steps. And that's fine. It'll give you time to process the feedback, seek advice from others and think about possible solutions. 6. Reconnect. Whatever you decide, circle back to your feedback giver to share your thinking. If you don't, they will think you didn't hear them or worse still, that you don't care. Letting them know you took their input seriously will strengthen the relationship even if you ultimately go in a different direction for their feedback. Bottom line, if people think you'll appreciatively consider their feedback, you'll get lots more. And that is a good thing, really. Thoughtful feedback helps you grow both personally and professionally. It's a gift that people who care about your personal and professional success can provide. Here's how that conversation with Myra might have turned out if she had chosen to receive the feedback with grace. Hey, Myra. Nothing really. I've noticed you around at work and I just wanted to share an observation about you. Yes, just three months in and the CEO already noticed me. Well done, Myra. I need you to be more creative. I hear you. You're saying you need me to be more creative. Thank you so much for sharing that feedback with me. And since you've taken the time to talk to me about it, it's definitely something I'd like to take a closer look at. Just so that we're on the same page, when you say creative, could you tell me a little more about what you mean? It's to do with your team meetings. Is there any way you can be more creative with the way you conduct them? Hmm, and I thought this had something to do with my visual design work. Okay, I could use some advice. Where do you think I could make improvements? I observe that you do a lot of the talking. There's never space for your team to add any input. And some of them are positively gifted. I know their work. This is so helpful. It never occurred to me that I was stifling the team's voice. I will definitely take your feedback into consideration. Let me think about it. Could I run my ideas by you a little later? Of course. I'll email some content links across to you. Have a look at them. You might find them helpful. Thank you so much again. It was very thoughtful of you to have shared your feedback with me. I think I'm better off for it. And I'll keep an eye out for that email with those links. In conclusion, 
Constructive criticism is often the only way we learn about our weaknesses, without which improvement would just not be possible. When we are defensive, instead of accepting and gracious, we run the risk of missing out on this important insight. Remember, feedback's not easy to give, so it pays to appreciate someone who's willing to brave it just to give you some thoughtful insights. And while it's certainly not easy to receive, it'll pay big time both now and in the long run. It's a gift that people who care about your personal and professional success give you and it's only right to learn to accept it with grace. Discovered something new? Hit like, share and subscribe to keep the knowledge flowing.